Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the 25 Days of Linux, the video series in which I am almost finally done with my goal of creating a video every single day for the month of December, or the first 25 days of December. I've kind of totally given up on changing the wallpapers. There's only so many like holiday Christmas themed wallpapers you can find, who cares? So, here's the deal. I've been using Linux for a little while now, uh, basically the whole time Arch Linux. Uh, actually, here, let's get a little um, count here. I might be one of the only people in the world that could literally pinpoint the exact date in which I started using Linux, and that is May 15th, 2020. Yeah, it's been about a year and a half. And here's the thing, while I've been using Linux, I think a lot of people that use Linux uh, at some point distro hop or will reinstall their OS or something like that, and especially because I'm using Arch and it is less stable than other things, there have been occasions where I've just completely reinstalled the OS. And every time that I've done that, even on my main machine, I've sort of, you know, just completely wiped the hard drive, done a fresh install, pulled down all my dot files, and synced everything back up. It's not a horribly difficult process, but, you know, it could be actually a whole lot easier. So what I mean by that is here, let me open up a terminal real quick. And if we go into a file manager and go out to just the root level of a Linux machine, almost all of them are going to be structured like that. You have several, several, several different folders. You're going to have all sorts of different root directories out here that are basically the structure of the actual operating system, all of the files to run the apps that you have installed, all that kind of thing. What actually doesn't really ever change is this directory right here, slash home, slash, you know, all your users, and then all of the different files that are in here. You know, there are some apps that are installed in here. For example, if I if I were to do, what's the command here? I could do du-hc, and I'm just gonna set the max depth to one here just so that it doesn't spit out a ton of info. And I run that on slash home. You can see my home partition actually is a whole lot of, of data. It's 237 gigs of data. And that's mostly just because of like Steam games. Steam games installed to the home directory. And that's actually really nice in this instance, because what we should be able to do is basically either put a second drive in our system or create a second partition or something to just store slash home on. What this then means is that any time moving forward in this future that we want to switch distributions, maybe just reinstall our, I've been thinking about switching to Ubuntu or a lot of people point out in the comments that Debian is probably a better option. I think they're probably right about that. Any sort of OS level changes I wanna make, I can make, but they'll take place independently of all my config files. In this particular case, because of the way that Steam installs on Linux, all of my games will still be installed, so that's great. Uh, just a whole lot of the actual data, a lot of the configuration won't change anymore. I should be able to kind of sort of completely sub in one OS for another and have all of my configuration still there and a lot of the settings still set. Just it doesn't really seem like there's many downsides to doing this other than the one, which is that I already have my OS installed, right? So what I'm sort of trying to do now is in the middle of using an OS, swap over to using a separate partition for home. So that's a little bit funky, but not the end of the world. The first thing we need to do is take a look at what we've got in our actual system. If I could do lsblk-f, you can sort of get a look at the drives that are on my system. These are loop devices, so we don't need to worry about that. Mainly what you see here is I have one main drive, NVMe, zero, N1. This is what I use to install Arch on. You know, there's FAT32 partition, a, swap, a small swap partition, and then just one main uh, better FS. I think I've been calling that butter FS for a long time, but it sounds close enough to better FS that people thought it was maybe an accident and no one called me out on it, but it's definitely better FS, not butter FS. It's a scandal. So that's the main drive. And then what I also have here is one more drive, SDC, which is just a extra drive that I threw in there. It's actually not a reliable drive. I don't trust it at all. I dropped it a few times. So I'm not going to be like actually switching my home partition over here in this video, but I will sort of go through and see how complicated this would be to make it happen. And at some point I will put another drive in there ideally. And going forward in the future, I'll have a separate home partition. So that should hopefully make things easier. But before we can do anything, we actually just need to partition this drive up to get it working the way we want it to. So a lot of different ways to do that, of course, uh, the, probably the easiest way is sudo cfdisk, and we're going to pull up slash dev slash 
SDC. And you see here now, this is basically a 500 gig drive. Uh, it's actually just a SATA drive. It's not an SSD or anything. It wouldn't really be the type of drive that I want to even use as a home partition. But like I said, it's just an example in this video, so it shouldn't be too bad. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and completely delete both of these two partitions that are on it, sort of just get it back to normal. So we'll go ahead and hit new. We're going to use the whole drive as one partition. We don't really need swap drives or anything. And uh, then what we want to do is we're just going to come to type. And in this case, since we're on Linux, we're going to make sure that this one is set to type 73 or Linux file system. And we'll go ahead and hit write and hit yes. And then we can quit with the letter Q. And if we run LSBOK-F again, you can see now we just have one SDC file system on it right now is XFAT, just because that's what it was before. I sort of had it formatted to swap files between Windows and Linux really easily, uh, but that's not ideal here at all. In any situation where you can get away with not using any of the Microsoft file systems, that's that's a great situation to be in. Don't use any of them. So what we can do is if I do sudo make file system and then dot and we hit tab, you can see all the options we have. Probably most people would want to format this as extend four which is sort of the default that most Linux uses. It's pretty fast, pretty reliable, pretty stable. What you can see here on my main Linux drive is I've been using BetterFS for a while now. And so I don't know if it's strictly speaking just super necessary to use the exact same file system on a home partition drive and the actual main Linux drive that you're using, but it does seem like a good idea. I'm gonna go ahead and format this as BetterFS as well. Also, just BetterFS does have some really nice features that it has. You can look up a video about that or an article about that if you're interested. It is slightly slower than ext4 if you were to do like a, a disk speed test. As far as I understand it, there is actually a tiny little bit of a performance hit, but I've never noticed an issue in everyday use, and it has some nice features that make backing up and data recovery easier. So uh, what we'll go ahead and do is we're just going to put betterfs onto slash dev sdc1 and it's saying hey uh, you already have a file system we'll do dash f to force and if we go ahead and do lsbok dash f again uh, you can see now sdc1 is betterfs and so now uh, we're going to want to mount this drive. Uh, if I cd into slash mnt real quick, which is just sort of where Arch Linux expects you to mount drives, I've got a few folders here and I might have one or two that are empty. Yeah, so we'll just use this like USB folder. It's just, you just need an empty folder to mount to, right? We go ahead and do sudo mount slash dev sdc1 to slash mnt USB. Now we're ready to go ahead and actually copy over our home folder to this new drive. Or, you know, if you just made a second partition on your main drive, whatever. So what we can do is let's come in here and we're going to use a command called rsync. I think it's installed on Arch by default, actually. But just to be on the safe side, we'll do sudo pacman-s rsync. Maybe it isn't installed on Arch by default. Okay, so then what we'll do is sudo rsync and you can look through the man page to see how this works but i'll save you some time at least in this context what you need to do is run rsync with the flags a v and x and that'll basically just make a one-to-one -one copy of your home folder to the new drive so in order to do that we're going to pick the input which is going to be slash home our whole slash home directory and we're going to put it in slash mnt usb go ahead and run that uh, so this is going to take a little while for me it very well might take a little while for you but just hang out for a bit Maybe now would be a great time to grab some whiskey. All right, you know what? Never mind. Forget this. This is going to take way too long to freaking back up 200 some odd gigs of stuff. But if we do go into a file manager and we take a look at slash MNT USB, you can see it has copied over a good bit of our home folder here. So really the way that this would work is you would just literally unmount this drive would be the first thing to do now that we've copied over the files. So you do, uh, if we run lsblk-f again, just so you remember it's on slash mnt usb. So we would do sudo umount slash mnt slash usb. Whoops, usb. Now, the next step you maybe could do from some window managers, depending on what terminal you're using and stuff, basically the way that it works is you literally are just going to remove the home folder from your main drive and then mount the partition or the second drive that you just set up to slash home. So the issue is there for at least a couple of seconds, all your configs are going to be gone, which is why like if you're in a desktop environment, there's a pretty decent chance it's going to break. You might even crash the desktop environment. You could probably get away with doing it in a lot of window managers. 
But the way that that would work basically is, you know, whenever you're ready to remove your home partition, you would literally just run uh, remove dash RF slash home slash star. And then you just need to link up your drive. So, I mean, you could just do sudo, sudo mount slash dev STC one and put it in slash home, but we need to make this permanent. We don't want to do that every time we start up our system, right? So what you need to do is you need to actually edit the FS tab file. So the way that that works is you need the block ID for the drive that you're using. Simple command for that, blk id. Oh, I think you actually have to run that one as sudo blk id. Uh, yep, 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 yep. What we're looking for is slash dev sdc1, and we want this uuid. So it's gonna be this entire line right here, uuid equals seven ff66, all that nonsense. And you just wanna make a copy of that, right? And then what we can do is actually edit the FS tab file. So that is in slash Etsy FS tab, you would wanna do that as super user, right? So you're gonna do sudo and we'll use invim and we'll go into slash Etsy FS tab. And you can see it already has a record for all of the partitions and all of the drives that are gonna be loaded every time our system starts up. And what we'll do is we'll make a comment here and we'll say we're this is gonna be slash dev slash SDC one. And we're gonna go ahead and paste in that UUID line. Uh, we actually need to remove the quotes from it there for the way that this file is formatted, it looks like. And then the next bit here is gonna be asking for the actual mount point. So let's see, we could tab over. It's gonna to wanna to be mounted to slash home. Then what it's gonna want is it wants to know what the actual file system on the drive is. Of course, that's better FS tab over this spot here is asking for options or anything like that you can see like uh, my EFI VFAT thing has a whole lot of options that go with it what we're gonna do is we're gonna set defaults here and then for this last field here I have sort of a limited understanding of what we're doing here but basically you want two numbers here uh, the first one's gonna be zero almost always and then the second number I believe refers to sort of the order that the drives are gonna be loaded in uh, so I assume we would want to do zero two but look Looking at the way that this file is configured, I don't think it really matters if you have more than one drive in the same like order. So I think we're gonna be good either way here. And then what you would wanna do is write and save the changes, right? But I don't actually wanna do that yet. So we'll go ahead and quit. And at this point, you probably wanna, you know, reboot, make sure everything's working smoothly. Uh, and then, you know, I don't know, maybe just whip out an ISO and try to do a fresh install, see what happens. But uh, in my case, that's probably gonna be a different video, hopefully coming pretty soon. Uh, that will be all for this one. Thank you everyone for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.